Go ahead, Mary, and introduce yourself and, and uh, introduce your, uh, your students. All right, so let's begin. Uh, Mike, the uh, teacher from Lebanon is asking for authorization authorization for uh, showing slides, I think, right? Oh yeah, let me do that right now. Uh, let me, I got, I got everybody's slides to, it were go. Everybody right. should permission now. Hello, we are the students from Affiliate High School of Zhongxi University. I'm E. I'm Ellen. I'm Sammy. I'm Bella. Today, we are going to introduce Taiwanese sandwiches. Breakfast shops in Taiwan sell a wide variety of sandwiches. We often eat them for breakfast. Sandwiches come in many flavors, such as chocolate sandwiches, Pearl sandwiches and tiny sandwiches. What are tiny sandwiches? Tiny sandwiches usually contain ham, egg, mayonnaise, and cheese. But some breakfast shops may put other ingredients in tiny sandwiches to make them more unique than ordinary sandwiches. To make tiny sandwich, we need eight teaspoons of whipping cream, eight teaspoons of mayonnaise two slices of cheese, one slice of ham, four slices of toast, and one egg. First, beat the egg and pour the egg liquid into a pan. Second, swirl the pan gently so the egg fully covers the pan. Wait for a couple of minutes and flip it. Then the egg is done. Third, spread a thick layer of whipping cream on two slices of bread and put one piece of egg between them. Fourth, Spread a thick layer of mayonnaise on the top piece of bread. Put ham and cheese on the bread with mayonnaise. Fifth, spread more whipping cream and put it in the rest of the egg. Complete the sandwich by putting the last piece of bread on it. In Taiwan, when we talk about sandwich, many people think of Hong Rui Zhen. It is a well-known sandwich brand in Taiwan. The sandwiches in Taiwan is simple and easy to eat because of its triangular shape and cheap price. The price of each one does, does not is, exceed for 40 NT dollars. For some seasonally limited flavors and new flavors, the price will be higher. In our family, we buy the most popular sandwiches most often and we store them in the refrigerator. This sandwich can only be refrigerated for three days. So we have to eat them within the expiration date, otherwise they will expire. There are some flavors with two types of bread. One is whole wheat bread, the other is white bread. And what I'm going to introduce today is their special tip sandwich. The reason that it's delicious are the puppy toast is sandwiched with special ham and egg and paired with special sour dressing and sweet cream. These perfect combinations give a seemingly ordinary sandwich an extraordinary taste that makes the diet happy of modern society. Thanks for listening. Do you have any questions? I have several questions. Go back to that picture on the bread, the sandwiches. Do, do you cut the crusts off? Yeah, in Taiwan, they do that. <laughs> well, I've seen a, um, bread that sometimes it's in the um, Asian section of our food markets. And it's like a little tiny loaf and they cut all the crusts off. So I, I didn't know if that was a, a common deal there or not. So I, I was going to ask that question. It and is, my, especially <laughs> with breakfast shops. It, I don't know, they try to make the sandwich look fine. I don't know if that's the right word. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I understand. It, it may look more appeasing because uh, in some countries, you know, like uh, pita breads and, you know, and, you know pita bread's a, a different thing. And, and Harari will explain more about pita bread and stuff. But some, some sandwiches are mostly crust. If you get to like uh, you know, some of the Italian sandwiches, you know, some of the long French breads and stuff like that, the crust is considered, you know, the, the main part of the food, you know, so to speak. So I, I was just asking about that. And the next one is at the very beginning, and I can't remember the name of the thing. Is that like what we call French toast? Okay, now uh, I saw no one, okay. Are these, yeah, right here, that, that, that picture right there, is that uh, you, you, put the, you put the toast in the batter with eggs and then you cook it, correct? Let me ask you, this is a sandwich. No, this is, this is just eggs. Oh, okay. But we also uh, make French toast as well, like what you said, uh, dipping mm -hmm. the, the piece of white bread into egg and then frying it, right? Yeah. I did not know that's what I was asking because that that's a quite a common we got some more people here too um uh, that's quite a common delicacy After they, they were, yeah. <laughs> breakfast food here in the states too now if you eat french toast you put syrup on it too or no uh let me ask them the woman I think it depends, but I think most of us say no. <laughs> I would. <laughs> but again, I, I'm more American, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I'm deeply influenced by my childhood experience. Okay. And we go back to pictures of those sandwiches. They look like what we call here in the States club sandwiches. We have like three pieces of bread and um, this one? Yeah. No, the next one after that. That that one right there. Okay. So what constitutes a club sandwich? Well, that's what I was asking. Uh, a club sandwich is normally they have like three or four pieces of bread and they have a little sque uh, stick uh, or skewer and it, co it connects it all together. It's exactly like that. And they call that in the States here, they call that a club sandwich. So, uh, size, right? Right, right. Exactly right. So th that would look very similar. And I was going to ask the question, what kind of fillings do they put in that? It looks like they have some meat and cheese. I didn't know what else was in there. It's got kiwi fruit and tomato. Meat and cheese. Okay, well, what, what's inside? Cheese. Cheese, ham. Meat floss. Meat floss. Uh, we, we went over that. Cucumbers. Breaded cucumbers, I guess. Oh, wow. Lettuce. Yeah. Lettuce. Yeah. And the tuna. Wow. Tuna, tuna fish. Yeah, some, some are, oh yeah, some are like tuna fish combos, I guess, and some are chicken combos. Oh wow, um, and how much would that cost? How much? Uh, Fifty-five dollars for two. Yes, it's like a set. It's open a paper box, and it will have two cup sandwich, and uh, it's usually takes 50 NT dollars. 50, so it's uh, almost two US dollars. Right? Almost two US dollars, yes. Oh, wow, that's really good. <laughs> now, do, do they serve stuff like that at lunch for school or no? No. <laughs> why isn't it, why isn't this served at school? Too much bread? It looks good though. Because that's, I think it's that most Taiwanese students don't have that. Maybe the American or other 
European country might think that would be cheaper. But as actually Taiwanese students don't have less much money, less much money. We own usually buy a rice ball or what food okay. or breakfast in a shop in the school only take one US dollar maybe. Yeah. So if we sell the sandwich at school, I think not very it's not gonna sell well. Yes. Okay, so um yeah, and usually this is uh in Taiwan it would be considered like breakfast, but not okay. lunch. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. wow. Now see that's opposite. We would we would have like in my part of Texas, we would probably have uh, breakfast tacos because we have a, a, a large uh, Hispanic community and stuff. And then th something like that would be for lunch, but that is considered a breakfast. That's really neat. That's, that's very interesting. Well, we just had, a, I just uh, sent a link and invited our uh, student from Brazil, Paulus, join us. I knew, I think you remember him. He, he was one of the uh, lawyers in the yeah. uh North the far right side. yeah and now he's back in brazil so welcome paul <laughs> oh good cool. oh good 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 well i wish him a, a happy summer oh it's summer there yes okay so uh that was very good very well presented i think harara wants to her students want to uh you ask a question or they're anxious to uh, try to present something as well in between you guys, okay? Sure. Lebanon, did you want to ask a question or did you want to go ahead and present? I don't know what happened to her. Uh, actually, uh, the first part of our presentation wasn't completed. Should okay, we? Okay, go ahead. That? Continue. Let's continue. I'm sorry. No problem. I think she got bumped off somehow. They're having some really issues with like uh, some like uh, electricity, I guess, over in Lebanon as well. Go ahead. So, um, what we see here is uh, the two pictures here. They are students from Lebanon as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, we will finish our first part, oh, and no, then we'll no move on to Lebanon. Mm -hmm. Hello, we are students from Affiliated Senior High School of National Zhongxin University. I'm Howard. I'm Sam. I'm Jim. I'm Jason. I'm Ember. I'm Brian. Today, I'm going to talk about famous popular food in Taiwan, clay over rose. Clay over rolls is originated in <clears throat> Central Asia. Almost 2,000 years ago, a Chinese envoy bring this kind of food into China, and it soon become popular because the Chinese love it very much. And after World War II, Chinese government for Mingdang came over to Taiwan, and they also bring plenty of food. Clay over rolls was one of them. And the clay over rolls tastes a little bit crispy and it has a little bit aroma from flour. And it, it also goes well with savory fillings like egg and pork. That's why we always see clay over rolls seasoned by this savory filling. Nowadays, Taiwanese enjoy clay over rolls with soybean milk. And we also can buy it at breakfast shop or street vendor. We need to pay US dollar, 0 0.6 US dollar to buy one clay over rolls. All of these cuisines is originated in China because but Taiwanese add some features to it. That's why we're fascinated by it. Now, we will show you how to make clay over rolls. You need to make the short cross pastry first. The following are the ingredients for short crust pastry. Flour, 60 grams. Cooking oil, 30 milliliters. Here are the steps to making short crust pastry. 
stir fry the batter with cooking oil until it becomes brown and starts giving off aroma. Then the short crust pastry is completed. Next, we will make the dough. Here are the ingredients for the dough. Flour, 400 grams. Cooking oil, 30 milliliters. Salt, three grams. Boiling water, 200 milliliters. Cold water, 15 milliliters. White sesame, moderate amounts. Now, we will tell you how to make clay oven rolls. Um, first, you need to put boiling water and the salt in the flour and stir it. And then, you need to add cold water and cooking oil and knead the salt. Remember to let the dough rise for 15 minutes. Roll it into a 40 cm square. Scrap the shortcut pastry evenly. <clears throat> and roll it into a cylindrical shape. Divide it into 10 parts. <clears throat> roll it out separately twice with three four meter. And finally, dip it into white sesame seed and roll it out into rectangle. And then bake it. Remember to back the side with white sesame seed for six minutes until the both side turn yellow and, the, and it's complete. The next food we are going to talk about is peanut roll with ice cream. It is a food made with spring roll wrapper, scraps of peanut brittle, ice cream, and coriander. When you eat it, you will test a tender spring roll wrapper first. Next, you will not only feel the sweet, cool ice cream, but you can also test and smell the special fragrance of peanut brittle with coriander. Popular flavors of ice cream in Taiwan are milk and tall, but there are also novel flavors such as lemon and macho also known as green tea flavor. You can make a peanut roll with ice cream with your favorite ice cream flavor and enjoy it. The idea of creating spring rolls with ice cream came from a vendor in Yilan, Taiwan. During that time, his father passed away, but he was reluctant to put away the traditional taste that's created by his father. He decided to take over his father's stance, but then the business plummeted. Plummeted. Um, but then later he discovered that the taste of spring rolls with ice cream earned much more money. So he started to promote this. As expected, the business started to improve and and in addition, the traditional taste, which created by his father, can, um, also continues. Now, we will show you how to make peanuts roll with ice cream. For ingredients, you need one piece of spring roll wrapper, several stalks of coriander, two tablespoons of peanut powder, two teaspoons of sugar, two scoops of ice cream, and some condensed milk. Here are the instructions. Step one, mix peanut powder and sugar together. Step two, tighten the peanut the wrapper on the table. Then put the powder that you get from step one on the wrapper. Step three, smear some condensed milk on the edge of the wrapper. Step four, put two scoops of ice cream and some coriander on the wrapper. Lastly, roll up the wrapper. Then you will get a dessert which is full of a penis aroma. What a delightful, cool treat in summer. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? That concludes the first part of our presentation. We're open to questions now.
Eyes on mute. On the spring roll wrapper, what's that made of? No. What is the spring roll wrapper made of? Oh, glutinous rice. Yeah, okay. And then they would make all this up and serve it all at once and correct. I mean, when you go to the store, this isn't pre-made up, is it? This is made right there and on the spot because otherwise the uh Ice cream will soak through. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, okay. And on a coliander, what does coliander taste like? And sweet tongue chai sang. Uh Chang It's sort of like parsley, but it doesn't well it's a, the purpose is like parsley. Yeah. But it really so it doesn't taste. Stronger? Stronger? Brian says it's stronger than parsley. Yeah, I've seen it at the store. I, 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 and I like to eat parsley. So, I, you know, I just never had. I never had I, I'll try some of that today, maybe. That, that's kind of interesting to find out. So when you go to the market, you can get coriander? Yeah. You can get them at you can get them at some of the stores here in in town. Uh, oh. So you know, I, I, I think you can. I, I've seen it at the store before. You know, so I, I just never knew what it was to speak of. Now, my next question was how do the clay rolls? Now, uh, how thick are they? About two centimeters. Oh, okay. really? Yes. Really? If okay. you put the savory <laughs> fillings like pork, milliliter or centimeter? Centimeter. Oh, if you put the filling like pork or egg and egg, is. Are you sure? Because I, apparently yes. I don't eat clay over um, I'm like so astonished. Okay. Oh, if it's without any feelings, only clay overalls is about one, 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 zero, two, zero point five oh, centimeter. Zero. If only the it's only if only clay overalls without any feelings is about mm -hmm. zero point five centimeters. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it it includes the filling. Then it's like what you said, like about two. one point five to two centimeters. Okay. Okay. So, am, am I correct to say it's like a flat bread that you roll over, or no? A flat. Okay. What? You have two pictures here. The one yeah. on the right that I see, it has a a filling, but is that is that the top of that is is. It's just rolled over on top of the filling, correct? No. Um, how did you, how do we, okay, the question, I would say, how do we put the filling inside? How was the clay oven roll originally designed? How do you slide the filling inside? Oh, we will take a, maybe a slice of clay oven rolls and we will. Use a knife and slice? Yes, it. use a knife ah. to slice us. Slice it open in the from the side, you know what what we mean, and then put the uh, filling inside. Oh, okay. So, in other words, uh, it, it's not like a, a flat bread that you roll over on top. You just cut it in the middle and put it in that way. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow! And how much? How? Okay, this is kind of interesting to me. How much of that is a crust? Because it looks like it's got a very brown crust, and then it has a little bit looks like chewy part. So how how thick is that crust compared to the chewy part? With chili. Okay, it, it looks like on the top of it, you know, you have the brown that it, it's been cooked, and it has sesame seeds on top. Correct. Yeah, that's part of the uh, the clay oven roll. Okay, and then then it has like a little layer below it looks to be white, which is obviously not cooked as much. I just was wondering the differences in taste. So some would be crunchy and some would be kind of like chewy, correct? Right. 
the yeah. different parts. Yes, different. Only the crust. Yeah. Text and, yeah. and how thick is that crust? Is what I'm asking. Oh, it's very. How many? Like, 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 one milliliter only. Yes. Oh, very, wow. very thin, thin it's layer. Thin. That looks that looks very that looks very appetizing. Uh, do, do any of your students there eat these for breakfast or no? You eat this for breakfast? Sometimes. 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 Okay. Yes. So, I think this would be a good market to open up in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, you know that 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 looks to be really it looks. Of all the things you should see, that looks to be uh, very, very interesting. I can see why it would be very popular and what was introduced from the from the steppe people back into uh, back into China. I guess it was when did the Mongols bring it back in or, or some of the people because uh, or else we could talk to people in Lebanon because they have similar looking things. I know in the Middle East as well. So I, I think it went both ways on the Silk Road. Wow. So perhaps we will hand over the time to Lebanon and see if we should or they can play the slides with them. I think so. Let's see. Uh, Lebanon, are you guys ready? Farah? So I see Farah and Jeff, right? Yeah. And are they able to uh, speak to us or perhaps they can tell us uh, this, this, how it is? I got you as a co-host too, Mary. So you can, I tried to ask them to unmute, but they hadn't done that. So I just got a message from um, um, Hara earlier saying that they wanted to present when you were done. Uh, they'll present your work when they're done, but that's uh, that's all I got, and I hadn't. Here we go. No, we can't hear you. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's from you. Okay. Yeah, that's from me. I'm I'm asking if they can at least uh, hear and see us, and whether they could respond through the chat box. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really like those clay over rolls. Those look really good. <laughs> Maybe we should send you the recipe. <laughs> you yeah. have an uh, you have an oven, right? Yeah, oh yeah, we have an oven. Yeah, and it actually works. Uh, a lot of people that you know, it's kind of crazy because uh, when you lose, if you have a gas oven, but you uh, lose electricity because the oven has to be, uh, it has to have some electronics even in the gas. They couldn't even use their oven, so we've been pretty lucky. Hey, how are you? Oh, we are fine. Go ahead, yeah, Jeff. Can you present now? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we were having some trouble with our internet connection. Okay. Hey, Jeff, where's that picture from? Yeah, that's in the in our mountains. We have snow right now. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, it's really snowy. I, I will they got present. It got snow yeah. about 500 uh, meters up, huh? Yeah, it's a lot. Wow. Go ahead. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present my PowerPoint now about yeah. uh, our, our uh, labne, Lebanese labne. You know it? It's, it's a kind of cheese. Okay. So will yeah. you be able to push the content? Yes, one minute. I will just show it on the screen. Now, Jed, for for the purposes of help the kids from Taiwan, whereabouts in Lebanon are you located? We are located in Beirut. We're in... Capital city. Yeah. And how far are the mountains away from you? They're not that far. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now that my project. 
Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So this is Lebanese Lebne, thought for food and eat healthy, live happily. It's the healthiest Lebanese breakfast also. I will be talking about two things, Lebanese Lebne and uh, Manoushe. It's a type of bread with uh, a few sesame seeds and uh, zaka. It's very famous in our country. Here are the objectives. So I will tell you what is Lebne, how to serve Lebne, and the ingredients of Lebne. What is Lebne? Lebne is a staple in a Middle Eastern cuisine, especially among the Levantines. Lebne is one of the, the, those basic foods that is one of breakfast table every single day, no matter what else is being served. Whether you're, you're having manaish or full or even eggs, a small plate of Lebne drizzled with olive oil is always there. You can find Lebne sold at any Middle Eastern gross in a small plastic container similar to yogurt containers. I, small, I always have at least one of, if not two containers in my fridge at all times. They have a decent fridge life about a month or so. How to serve Lebne? If you are not familiar with Lebne, it's a very similar cream cheese texture with a creaminess, but with a danger taste. It's a very basic way to serve it also. So here's a pictures of Lebne. And uh, I will be talking about Manoushe, a uh, history of Manoushe. Uh, also, what is uh, manushi? How is manushi served? And the ingredients of manushi. Uh, the Lebanese manushi. The manushi is essential Lebanese breakfast derived from the Arabic word nash, which refers to the way the fingertips of the baker engraves the dough. The manushi is indeed engraved upon our collective memories as Lebanese. The smell of our man of the manushi be zatar in the morning catapults, a Lebanese person back in time to live, to live to a lively childhood birthday party, breakfast on the go, classmate before an exam, a cozy morning spent tete a tete with a loved one. In such way, the Monoshe is indeed engraved upon our collective memories. So here's our history of Monoshe. From Saidali and Babda opened its doors 150 years ago. Mr. Kanan Saidali, the owner, operates this bakery with his wife as he has done over for half a century. Mr. Saidali, Mrs. Saidali kindly pleaded fresh orange for me and we sit, sat down to discuss the history of the foreign, the street corner of the Lebanese bakery. This is the types of manoushe got cheese manoushe, zaatar manoushe, uh, meat bajin manoushe. It's a lot of types for it. And here's some pictures. So thank you for watching that was all. Hey, Jack, could, I think they have some questions from Taiwan. Yeah, we'll ask anything. Questions? Who wants to ask questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I want to ask what's the difference between mushe and the, the pizza? Because they look similar in our, yeah, in our, mm -hmm. in our view. Uh -huh. Yes. So it's, is it similar it's, like pizza? It's not the same, but it, there's only one similarity between two of them. There's only the dough. That's the only similarity. And some only the cheese, if you like cheese manushi. So you got uh, the pizza, that you need to put uh, salsa on it. So it's way different, but uh, it's the dough that makes it similar. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your answer. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Jack, would, would, would your family be making that homemade or would you buy that at a store? 
You can do it uh, both ways, honestly. Um, but I prefer to do it homemade. It's very easy. It's not hard. As much as long as you have the dough, you can do it home. Now, Jad, if if the kids from Taiwan wanted to try something like that and they use pita bread, what what kind of a uh, 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 minutia would you suggest they would try to make with pita bread? Um, I suggest a cheese one. It would be very delicious, cheesy. That might be something you could try. Uh, do you have any sort of uh, Middle Eastern grocery stores or shops like that in Taiwan yet, Mary? We have. We still have a few grocery stores, but most are, you know, replaced by convenience stores. You know, Seven Eleven, Family Mart. You know, those kind of chain stores. But oh, there yeah. are still a couple of, you know, I think you call them mom and pop grocery stores around. Wow. That is crazy. So I guess you would do grocery shopping every day almost then, right? Yeah, a lot of people do that. And, and the markets, uh, whether they're traditional markets or supermarkets, you know, they're within walking distance. So a lot of people, you know, unlike in the U.S., when we were living in the U.S., we like do the grocery shopping like once a week or maybe sometimes it lasts longer. Mm -hmm. um, the supplies last longer, but here in Taiwan, uh, many people go out, you know, on a daily basis to do grocery shopping. Of course, if you're busy uh, with your work, you might also re uh, resolve to shopping once a week as well. Hey, Jad, uh, uh, how long would it take for you to make minutia if you to cook it by hand? Um, I mean, it's um, well, you gotta do the dough first. You know, it will take like a couple of 10 minutes and um, just put the zatar on it or the cheese, anything you like on it. Um, it will need like ten, eight minutes to five minutes on the stove oh, on the, wow. in the oven. That, that looks really good. Which kind yeah. do you like the best? I like the cheesy one, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in, in how close were you to where the, the buildings blew up in Beirut? Yeah, that was a tragedy. I was, uh, I was a little bit far, you know. Did you have any relatives or anything that got hurt or no? Yeah, I had some. Uh, my cousin, she, their, her house was completely wrecked. Oh, wow. You yeah. might want to tell, I don't know if Taiwan knew about it or not. You might want to tell what happened earlier or last fall. Yeah, in August 8, uh, our biggest uh, port, it was destroyed by a big explosion. And all the houses around it, there was many injuries. People died. Yeah, buildings blew up. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, it, it rocked the whole city, didn't it? It rocked a lot of windows. Yeah. People felt it all around Lebanon. People felt the way. Do they ever know what caused it or no? Uh, everyone says um, something different, you know? No one says the same thing. Uh, it, everyone has a different story, but nobody knows the truth behind it. <laughs> yeah. so, hey, I hate to tell you this, Jad, but I don't know if anybody knows the truth about anything anymore. So I, I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. I understand that completely. But I'm really sorry about if any of your family got hurt or anything. That's really sad. I really appreciate you you bring that. That was that was very good. Now, what does that what does that uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Zutar. How, what does that taste like? It tastes. It's made usually for it has sesame seeds inside it and some olive oil and it tastes really good it tastes like a little bit bitter and salty you know it's a mixed wow hey, uh, mary have you tried any lebanese food not really so i was yeah. thinking when i was yeah, you know, listening to a presentation just now, I thought, wow, that looks very good. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, full disclosure here, I, I've eaten quite a bit of different Lebanese food, and some of it is really, really very good. Uh, 
but uh, I've never eaten that before, but that actually looks very good as well. That was very good job, Zed. Uh, what grade are you in? I'm grade 11. Oh, wow. What, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go to college or what do you want to do when you get out of high school? I actually want to go to a, a college in America. Oh, wow. Where? Yeah, I'm thinking about Michigan. My oh, aunt wow. lives there. Oh, really? In Dearborn or no? Where did uh, she yeah. live? She, she was in born there. Oh, wow. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of Lebanese people uh, that <laughs> all over the place in Michigan, I know for sure. So I, I think you probably like that really well. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, I didn't know if the, the Taiwan people knew or not. Is there anybody else going to present something from your school or no? Well, I don't know, actually. Um, yes, yes. Farah Nassar is going to be the second one who presents. Yela okay. Farah. Oh, dear. Can, we go, can we go first because the students, uh, some of the parents are away. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yes, yes. You can start Thank first you. and then present her. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do it right after you then, okay? Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Now we are going to talk about the custom and origin of Lunar New Year. Now, now I'm going to talk about the story of men. A long time ago, there was a monster named Mian. He lived in the deep ocean, but on every New Year's Eve, he will come on land and attack whatever he can find and see. People in the village were so afraid that they escaped to the mountain to avoid Mian's attack. One New Year's Eve, while everyone in the village was busy packing up a beggar camp, no one gave the beggar help except for an old lady. The old lady gave some food to the beggar and also reminded him to escape to the mountain to avoid Mian. But the beggar laughed and said, if you let me stay at home tonight, I can help you drive this monster out. Monster out. The old lady agreed. At midnight, the men broke into the village and saw the red paper paste on the door. There was also the noise of firecracker coming out from the old lady's house. Mian was frightened by the noise and the red color and ran away immediately. Since then, people said of firecracker, his spring couplet, wore red coats and stayed up until midnight on every New Year's Eve. And gradually, it became a traditional Chinese custom. Next, let's talk about the Lunar New Year customs. The elderly would give red animals with with lucky money to their children. The amount of money must be even number. However, the numbers of four should not appear in the amount of money because the pronunciation of the four sounds like the word death in the Chinese language. People also like to wear red clothing during the Lunar New Year's because they believe that the color red could keep evil spirits at bay. People also pass Spring couplet on the door to express their hope for the coming year. Lunar New Year is an important holiday in the Taiwanese and Chinese culture. The street usually full of people. It symbolizes a new beginning that people get together and clean up their house. It's also time for family to get together to have their reunion dinner. For me, it's a special time. It's a good time to add something special, like the dishes in the picture. After introducing the origin and custom of Lunar New, New Year, let's talk about Lunar Calendar. Lunar Calendar is kind of traditional calendar based on monthly circles of moon's blessing. 
During the Chinese New Year, there are some taboos that should be avoided. Like people can say indecent words or swear. People should also avoid use, using words about death because it will bring bad luck. Before the fifth day of the first month on the lunar calendar, people should not throw any garbage or sweep the floor. If you want to sweep the floor, you should sweep on the in on the direction of your house. Both of these actions are symbols of keeping your keeping money in your home. But however, people should clean up their house uh, immediately after the fifth day of the first month on the lunar calendar because this helps drive away bad luck and poverty. Hello, I'm Sophia. I'm Yoi. I'm Hannah. I'm Lisa. In Taiwan, during the Lunar New Year, people will visit relatives and friends. According to the custom, elders will give younger kids red envelopes at this time. In addition, people will get together to enjoy reunion dinner. In particular, during the mail, everyone will be concerned about each other's situation. However, in some family, it may be troublesome for some young people who have started working because some elders will start to compare the situations of their sons and daughters, such as salary or benefit of work, whether to buy a house or a car, will they get married, how many children they have, and occasionally even talk about policy. Every Lunar New Year's Eve, my parents take me and my little sisters to my grandparents' house for reunion dinner. I really feel excited about it. My grandmother makes delicious dishes and they taste so good that I love them so much. All my relatives are there too. It's nice to have everyone together to enjoy dinner. I have a cousin who teaches me a lot of cool magic tricks. I like to play and have fun with him. And of course, my favorite part is to get red envelope with lucky money from adults. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have a family reunion on this special day. When it's come to the cuisine for the reunion dinner, people often include fish and sticky rice cake. That's because the pronunciation of fish in Chinese is similar to the word yu, which means surplus and represents aban abundance. When we eat fish, we cannot bleed the fish over because it would take the it would take the blessing away. As as for sticky rice cake, its pronunciation is similar to the word high. It is used for representing escalation and promotion in life, and it is used for it is, it is used to bless people in all works of life. In addition to food. The arrangement of seed is also important in ancient Taiwan. Chinese and Taiwanese people respect the status of the generation in the family. So in some families, members should sit in such order. The middle seat is for the eldest male members. The grandma, granddaughters, uncles, and aunts should sit in the order to the eldest life side. Dad, mom, and son should sit on the eldest right side. The following are the symbolic items of Lunar New Year. Dumplings. Dumplings please look like gold ingot. As a result, dumplings are meant to bring wealth. Candies. Candies are sweet. So people eat candy as a meaning of having a sweet ear. Tangerines. Eating tangerines give blessing of great fortune and prosperity. In Chinese, we say Da Ji Da Li. Same for listening. Do you have any questions? And that concludes our part. Yeah, um, 
what kind of money is normally given in the red envelopes? How much money normally? How much money? Or it depends on the-, the You say each, uh, each one. Yeah, okay. for each envelope. The money depends uh, on the economic status of well, each family. Well, Some will get very, a very well, huge pack. Like, 75 ounces. But the trick is it has to be in even numbers, you know? Okay. Right. So I mean, it's, it, I mean, would it be like hundreds of dollars, or would it be like, yeah, I, I guess you know. Well, let me ask you this question: Since you take Chinese New Year's uh, or Lunar New Year's, uh, what? How much money did you guys get? I got one thousand dollars from my parents. One thousand wow. dollars, right? Yeah. <laughs> ten thousand oh, wow. NT dollars for total. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Okay, now I, I was thinking a thousand dollars United States. That's really good money. Yeah, a, no wonder you had so excited. That, that's good. Plus, uh, our parents will soon get this money <laughs> stored into bank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I, the sticky rice cakes and the fish were okay, but the red envelopes were the best thing, huh? Yeah, the, they are always anticipating to get the red envelope. And when when is it? When are you considered too old to get a rented envelope? When are you too old? When married. When you're married, or, or when working. you start earning money, right? right? When you get yeah. a job. Okay, and then you start giving them red envelopes, right? Yeah, so you give back to your parents. And uh, and your kid. And, and your kid, <laughs> yeah. Right. If you are elder, like uh, grandpa or grandma, our in some family, father or mothers will give red envelope to our grandma. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so then, 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 so then, the grandparents like to get the red envelopes in. That, that that's really sweet. That's so nice. But it's an interesting thing that the grandpa and the grandma need to pay the red envelopes for the grandson and the granddaughter, and <laughs> the dad and or mother need to pay the grand red envelope back to the grandpa or grandma. It's just like a so circle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, so either you're giving or getting the, the rest of your life. That's really kind of neat. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's really special. Uh, is there any sort of religious, uh, uh, do you go to temple or anything else at that time or no? Yeah, some families will oh, go yeah. to visit the temple on the first day of Lunar New Year, right? Every day. Okay. What? We, our family go to temple every day in the Lunar New Year. Yeah. How long for every day? Uh, um, about eight hours all about the temple. We go to uh, worship, praying and worshiping in the temple. Yeah, I, I mean, how many days? Or you say every day during uh, the Lunar about New Year? three or four days. Okay, in a yes. row. Yes. So his family is very, you know, into, uh, you know, Bai Bai and uh, praying and visiting temples. So mm -hmm. Howard's family went visiting the temples for three or four days in a row. Yes. Okay. Now, if you, if, if let's say, for example, that if you were a uh, Muslim or you were Jewish or you were Christian, uh, you still celebrate Chinese New Year's, though, correct? Well, everybody gets to have a day off. The days off, so okay, everybody gets just one day off, but no, other a few days. days at least. Uh, well, for the uh, generic uh, people who are working, the population would be the day off for five days. What? Five days. Oh, so wow. it's like a national holiday. Yeah, and then for uh, schools, the winter vacation, uh, you know, centers on that. So it's a three week. Winter break, right? Yes. Oh wow! With that, the really Lunar New Year right in the center, or at least the lift. Yeah. And, and then oh, you said the when when General Chiang Kai Shek came over from uh, China to to Taiwan, uh, did they celebrate the Lunar New Year's before that or no? Yeah, they did. I think it's the same way of celebration, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. I, I, I guess I, I was just trying to, to find out. And uh, thank you so much. That was very good. I think that, uh, do you have any questions in Lebanon? 
Gerard, did you, any of your students have questions? If not, let's go ahead with your, your presentation, please. It's one more presentation from Lebanon. Okay, dear, uh, dear Farah, start sharing your screen, please. Hello, everybody. Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah. Can you see you? Oh, yeah. Now, I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Kafta Sandwich. Uh, my name is Farah Nassar, uh, and I study in Kafrahata Public High School. Food for thought, be healthy, live happily. The objective is what is Kafta? What's with all the ingredients? And uh, what's with all the different names? What to serve with Kafta? What is Kafta? Kafta is made of ground meat mixed with chopped parsley and onions. In, the, in this recipe, the mixture is spread between two layers of feta bread and grilled until the bread becomes brown. What's with all the different names? Kafta, kofta, or kifta. However you spell it, it amounts to the same thing, to the same thing, a ground meat kebab. The ingredients of kafta sandwich. Six warm pizza or flat bread, salt and the cracked pepper and hummus, one brunch parsley, some removed, three tomatoes cut into wedges, one cucumber slide into rounds, one onion slide into rounds or half moon, uh, olive, jalapeno pepper, for sure it's optional, one and a half teaspoon red pepper flake, more for later, one teaspoon smoked paprika, more for later. So this is the pizza bread and this is the hummus. It's mm. the same thing in our country. How to make a kafta, the meat? Okay, first of all, um, you have a large mixing bowl. Uh, combine the meat, the egg, bread crumbs, and garlic with the salt and the spices. For sure, with the clean hands, knead together until uh, all it's well combined. What to serve with kafta? Salad, uh, like fat touche and tabbouleh. Uh, sauce and dips, like tahini sauce, creamy hummus, or roasted red pepper hummus. This is the tahini sauce, and this is a bully, in order to know. Um, thank you. Get good, feel good. A healthy food for a healthy mood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, some questions there. Uh, uh, Mary, have you ever tried tabbouleh? Not really. It, it is delicious. It is, it is really good. Now, uh, uh, I noticed that you put lamb meat in there. Can you, can you use other types of meat as well? Yes, for sure. Okay, and uh, jalapeno peppers. I'm very interested in that. Uh, how do you like your jalapeno peppers in there? Do you like those or not? Yeah, I like it. Okay, because this is very, I mean, <laughs> this is extremely similar to uh, probably like in, in parts of Texas here, we would be using a taco instead of pita bread, but it would be a very similar type of, of stuff. And um, that's a, now what kind of tomatoes do you use in that? Did, did you use regular round tomatoes or no? Or can you use Roma tomatoes? Or you, what kind of tomatoes? I, I think it's Optional, it's yes, yes, Farah. It is the Lebanese tomatoes, the natural one, the round tomatoes. Okay, the round tomatoes. So, yes, we, the round tomatoes. It's the it's familiar here in Lebanon, and it's something that uh, it's available uh, during all seasons. And uh -huh. sometimes, sometimes only during winter, we can we can get the uh, that one from Amman, the Ammani. Uh, but they are all round uh, round tomatoes. Okay, because uh, the ones that we can get sometimes in the store here from Mexico are Roma 
I guess they come from like Italy type of thing. They're very small, but they're like a whole tomato. And sometimes they put those in there. So that's what I was asking. Because they'd be very, very small tomatoes, like little cherry tomatoes or whatever. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can use the cherry tomatoes also. You, it's fine, yeah. And never mind. They all, they will have the same. The cherry tomato is just more a little bit sour-like. But right. it's fine. It's fine. And I just want to mention something that sometimes you don't need the egg. For me, I don't put eggs for, for the kafta, but it's it depends on the flavor of people. And... For maybe the kids in, in, in Taiwan, because I don't know if they ever get to eat lamb, explain to them what lamb tastes like. The lab meat is the sheep meat. Yeah, no. So it, it, it's, a, it's more fatty than the beef meat. Yeah, it, it tastes really good though. I mean, if that's prepared right, that that's absolutely delicious. Mary, has any of your students ever had lamb or sheep? Yeah, we have lamb here. Um, oh, I didn't know. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, now can, we have can one? question is always from Brazil or wondering how much is one cup of sandwich. Yeah. How much would that sandwich cost if you bought it out? Um, it's about 7,000 Lebanese. Okay, and mm -hmm. what does that equal to now in U.S. dollars so they can understand? Or I know you won't be able to get in uh, Taiwan dollars, but what what's 7,000 in Lebanese money now? Does anyone know? For um, your purposes there in Taiwan, guys, Lebanon is going through a tremendous uh, inflation at this point. So it's it's less it's it's less than dollar, uh, Mike. <laughs> now the Lebanese currency is nothing. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. The the money is basically getting worthless. So it people are they're making food and they can't really buy stuff out as much. Can you, her? You might explain a little bit about what's going on in the country as far as food and stuff. Yeah, Farah, can you explain to you what's happening about the economic crisis in Lebanon? Feel free to talk. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Yeah, Farah, do you want to talk, dear? Farah. No worries. Maybe Farah is having connection problems. I can I can um, say that now Lebanon is facing a terrible uh, economic crisis, and the currency, which was every one thousand five hundred Lebanon liras, it was one dollar. Right now, it you need ten thousand Lebanon liras to get to get one dollar, which means everything and everything here. The economy is depends on dollar because everything we uh, we we are not productive country we just we are consumers like and we get everything from from the neighborhood uh, that's why we're suffering a lot honestly and maybe this is the toughest year in in in, in my in my whole life yeah it, it's it's she's if you caught that the the money's gone almost 10 times it's it's devalued by ten thousand percent or something to that effect. So uh, it's really difficult. And then in August eighth, they had that huge explosion, and a lot of people got very uh, you know uh, uh, impacted. So they've had just like double issues of tremendous things, a lot of political uprising and, and a lot of other issues. So you know. Uh, even stability of the electricity is not always that stable. So uh, I, at least when we're talking to the kids from Taiwan, they will understand a little bit about what you're going through because that, that's really hard. But that that food is, uh, you ought to try some of that with that pita bread, Mary. I think you'd really enjoy it. The kids would too. Yeah, we were just thinking about making that in our next camp session. <laughs> Yeah, and if you could get uh, Harar or, or Farah to give you what how to make tabbouleh. Uh, it's like a salad, right? It's a salad. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a required taste, but I kind of like it. it. But, you know, you have that coriander and stuff. It's got parsley in there and some other things. 
and uh, uh, our church uh, has big suppers when we used to, before COVID, and I used to have to, one of my jobs was, as a deacon of the church, one of my jobs was to help out in the kitchen, so I was trying to pull apart the parsley, and then it, it is very difficult to uh, make all that stuff by hand, so I really can appreciate uh, some of the people doing that, so uh, I have a little bit of knowledge in that area. Yeah, we're, we're going to try making the tavoli too. And, yeah, and it's very so, delicious. It's sometime Farah or, or Jed or, or her, uh, if you could tell us how to make kibbe too, that would be really good. I've always can enjoyed it. Yeah, can you please, Mike, repeat because I have a little bit internet problem. Okay, yeah, I said it's, it's sometime you could sh tell us how to make kibbe. Uh, yeah, kibbe, yes, the kibbe. Yeah, not kibbe nava, but regular kibbe. Because yeah, uh, I've, I've eaten kibbe quite a bit. I, I like that. Yeah. Did you eat it? Did you eat it raw or raw meat or uh, was no, it? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, so. uh, explain to them about kibbe nava. Okay. Look, I, I guess it's better that I would ask one of the students to prepare a presentation or like a video and then yeah, it will yeah. be more interesting for them. But anyway, what we do is that we uh, we smash meat. Meat is uh, grinded very, very, very uh, smoothly. And then we add the uh, Lebanese uh, grinned wheat called burgul. And then we have certain herbs, which we call it kamone. And then we put them all together and uh, we can eat it raw. And those uh, people who don't like it raw, we can uh, add uh, uh, like uh, cheese or sometimes just onion and meat. And we, uh, we make them uh, like a bowl shape or, or just a, a, a special shape. Uh, and then we, we boil them and they will be so delicious. Yeah, and, and Mary, they, they have a, a this kibbe, they serve it raw as well. And you never see so many excited people. And, and as in the line to get some, and I, I found out what it was. And I said, oh my gosh, no, I'm not that, I'm not that daring. So it is, it's one of the, it's one of the appetizers in all restaurants. You're going to see kibbe as Lebanese appetizer. Yeah. You say frog? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we used to have that, but it's not as popular as in the past. Wow. We, we enjoy it. It's very delicious. But nowadays, because of uh, COVID-19, we prefer it uh, baked or boiled or, uh, or even uh, fried. Most Lebanese prefer it fried. Yeah, it, it's uh, th now they'll serve it like when we had uh, a couple years ago when we used to have a uh, once a year we have a med training dinner at church and it, it was really special and we'd serve like 300 and something guests and they invite the mayor and, and different politicians and stuff would come and they would have that kibbe and tabouli and then we'd have a, a, a dessert from Lebanon and stuff and and then they have Lebanese dancing and it was it was really uh very uh, fascinating. And you have certain rice dishes, but you can kind of see where a lot of this stuff came through. And um, that pita bread, they'll have pita bread in, uh, you know, Greece, uh, pita bread in, uh, of course, all over the Ottoman Empire, pita bread spread around or that flatbread. And even you'll see it in Afghanistan as well. So I would assume it came on the Silk Road at some point. But uh, it pita bread is is really good, and and that and that sandwich like she was talking about, it looks. It, you need to try that for your winter camp. I, I think that was very good. Thank you so much, uh, Farah and Jad. That was very uh, very in, uh, very inspiring uh, stuff. And I know y'all are going through uh, a lot of uh, technical difficulties too, because I, I, so I really appreciate you, you guys sharing today. That was very good. Uh, Thank you a lot. Yeah, it's, it's about 9.30, so we're about ready to leave everybody today. Uh, we were supposed to be joined with some more people. Uh, I, I started out, I didn't tell you, Harara, but uh, our our school's down this week, or it was down all the last week. We're down to Wednesday. We've had some tremendous um, freezing issues here. 
uh, we had snow and ice and, and, uh, and all that. So, uh, uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate you guys, uh, coming on today. And, uh, that was delicious food. And, uh, and I, re you guys did a very good job all the way around and go ahead. Uh, you want to say goodbye, uh, to the kids from Lebanon there, Mary? Yes, indeed. Uh, it was a no, very good, uh, excellent presentations, Farah and Jack. And we hope to have you again with us soon. Yeah, you know, I, I think we Thank you so much. We hope that too. Yeah, and what's the topic next month, Mary? The yeah. topic is uh, rice dishes, rice dishes, fruits, nuts, cereals. Yeah, if if you uh, Harara, if you could get get the kids to work on something with pine nuts, uh, there's so many delicious uh, recipes and stuff with pine nuts from Lebanon. Maybe that would be kind of interesting because I don't know if you use pine nuts at all in Taiwan, but the, the, they're very expensive here, but they are very good. And she she could tell you some stuff. I will see you guys uh, next month, then, and I'll be emailing you. And I'll, I'll have out the uh, the uh, recording uh, as soon as I get done today. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.